Far too many times I get comments and questions, how do I properly work my hammer stones? I feel like I'm taking out too much stone, I'm really running into problems, and it makes snappers turn to something like an antler billet maybe a little bit too early in that thinning process. I do believe that if you are going down that pathway of trying to learn how to flint nap and, and, and make stone tools, whether it's for your own you know, arrowheads for hunting purposes, or you're looking to build your own uh, stone toolkits and hat in the bush and see how long you can survive or thrive out there. Whatever that case may be, knowing how to properly work your hammer stones is essential. I can tell you that so many people typically avoid really using a hammer stone in that thinning process. A lot of nappers turn to copper or they jump to those soft billets a little bit too soon when they could be using that hammer stone to really thin out that stone. I have a variety of hammer stones, various sizes, various shapes. Some are broken, they double as an abrader, they give me a flat side to work. I have giant size ones with multiple surfaces, just great for spalling, popping off flakes. I have some that have been chewed up just through repetitive use. You know, if we go back a thousand, hundred thousand, even a million plus years ago, um, versions of us were using hammer stones to craft their stone choppers, their, the, the Acheulean kind of, you know, styled hand axe. These early hand axes that were just really designed for, you know, scraping, cutting, you know, even smashing. These were used to essentially process game whether that game was scavenged or hunted or whatever that case may be, it was the cutting tool. This Acheulean hand ax that I have right here, kind of indicative of a, a bulbous end, which feels great in the hand, kind of a long pointed end. And as this, you know, Acheulean style hand ax has been used, you know, the tip's gonna wear down, you're gonna have to apply some kind of resharpening to it. But the point I'm trying to make is, this was only made with a hammer stone by myself. And an Acheulean hand axe kind of has a much thinner front side with a more bulbous end, which is really great for holding on to, even if you're cutting in this capacity, digging in the dirt, scoring around wood, or smashing open some bone. But these sort of tools were only made with hammer stones. So first and foremost, you have to understand when a piece of stone is held on the leg, I am not hitting my leg. This is a big confusion sometimes for folks. The key thing is I'm always hitting the stone, but a majority of the stone is taking that, that impact. I'm hitting the stone. I'm not hitting my leg. So even just doing that small little hit and just kind of removing this little uh, piece of cortex here to really get the inside. Yes, I felt it on my leg, but it's not like I'm hitting the leg with a, you know, one pound or a half pound or you know, a quarter pound hammer stone. I'm hitting the actual target stone and doing some of that initial reduction. You can do little chops, but even something in this capacity is very light on the leg. I'm not striking the leg. I'm striking into the stone, applying that force and that impact in the stone, ultimately removing that flake. Anytime I hold hammer stones, I never hold them like a baseball. I'm not doing this. I'm holding it between my fingers and my thumbs, and I'm using my wrist in a lot of motion to drive any sort of flake off. Like that right there for me is a perfect sort of atlatl dart point. This turtle back, which I know a lot of nappers do not like to face because it's flat on one side and completely rounded on the other. But this chunk, this spall that I just pulled off is ideal for napping some sort of dart point. Just like anything with napping, uh, especially on a turtle back like this, I'm looking to raise my edge. And with a hammer stone, this is really ideal. For nappers to understand that you can jump up and down in hammer stones really based off the target material you're trying to hit. So I know just by looking at this stone, I've got about one centimeter of cortex that goes the whole way around. I'm probably gonna lose some of this edge here. I've got a few little crystals over here where I'm really targeting the majority of my point is up in this region, kind of that top side. And what I'll do is I'll take some flakes off with the hammer stone and kind of give you that idea on how you can take something like this, a turtle back or any sort of spall and use some proper hammer stone strikes and thin this guy out. So looking at this guy right off the bat, I kind of have this little chunk coming off here. With my hammer stone, I'm not gonna strike into it, I'm gonna slap it. There's a difference between a strike where I'm driving my hammer stone into the stone, slap where I'm slapping through the stone. So this is a strike, this is a slap. For this, I wanna pop a chunk off 
so I can raise this hard edge up to here and really start to drive some flakes off the top. So with this, it's a slap. I slap through the stone. You can see my edge was all the way around here. My edge follows all the way to this very point. When I pop that chunk off, I've now raised my edge up, right? So now that I've raised my edge from here up to here, it's gonna be easier to drive some flakes off this way. Before I start attacking this area, I wanna see if I can continue to raise this edge up. So now I'm gonna do a couple more slap strikes where I'm just gonna kinda of follow this edge the whole way around and try and terminate over here. slapping through. Every slap is through the stone. What's happening is my edge is slowly going up. So when I flip my stone over and I try to attack this little isolated platform over here, hopefully I can remove majority of the mass right off the top of my stone. Napping, there's always preparation. Just trying to raise the edge. All of those first slaps were really just conditionings, right? I'm just trying to get to the most advantageous way of getting this material off. A little abrasion on it. Some more conditioning strikes, lots of cortex. You gonna give it a slap through? popping material off, right? I'm starting to thin that dome down. The cortex on this, and this being a hard chert, it's gonna require some work, but this is where working the hammer stone really comes into an important play. Let's go here. Lots of cortex. Once that cortex is removed, it's easier to address a lot of the stone in the flake removal process. The reason being is that cortex really softens the blow when you're striking. Instinctively, you know, just looking at this piece right from here, this would be a great soft billet, but we'll remove it with that hammer stone. Should clear all this out right there. Good. Slap. Good. A little stone inconsistency, but just coming along. Good. All right, let's go to the flat stone. Got a little bit more of a bulbous side here. Just starting to thin out. Let's see if you can pop a little something just, just lightly, just, just with the slap. That works. That works. A little bit of cortex still. Now once you've got it down to a relatively thin, there's still a lot of you know clear work that needs to go on to it. This is where some of the thinning is gonna come in. When it comes to thinning it now and really getting it a little bit thinner, I'm always working with the flat stone. It feels better in the hand, it's not as heavy. I can take my finger and really point it where I want to go. More importantly, there's not a lot of stone behind here. Compared to this hammer stone, I can do the same thing, but I've got a lot of mass behind my stone, which could result in removing off more of that target stone material. Good. Breaking through, good. Shh. Removed all that guy. Let's come up to the front a bit. Good. 
good. Clear that out. Got a nice little platform here. Striking through. Every slap that I do, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with the stone and I'm just slapping the edge and coming through. You can see my hand comes down here every single time. Even when you look at this stone on those last couple strikes I did, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four strikes all from this side right through here. And that was just with slapping the stone. Let's see if we can clear out some of this junk up in here. A little inconsistencies in the stone, but that's napping. All right, so kind of have a whole, I have a whole edge right through here, looking to remove material on the inside. Coming down, start at the back, and just give each one a slap through, coming through. There's one, there's two. Let's remove some of this bulb right up through here. Nice thin flake. You can get thin, thin flakes with a hammer stone. It is totally doable. It's all about slapping through the rock. All right, got a little bit of a mound, just a slight one right here. I got a crystal sitting here and I've got this edge right there. I'm going to see if I can pop a flake off, shoot it right across. Give me a little bit more thinning. A braid, slapping through the stone. Dropped the hammer stone, but that flake went from there. I avoided my crystal and I went right to the midpoint of it. Good little flake, straight across. Let's come from this side now. Good flake. Once the platforms really start getting tiny and small, like this guy right here is about as small as I want to go with the hammer stone. I'll be able to get it pop the little flake off. But as I start getting really small into those small platforms and I'm just removing small little flakes, this might be the time where you transition into pressure flaking. I still do a once around. I think I can get one more, almost like a little flute off of this guy. Thin that, that's good. Got this sitting below my center line right through here. Tell me you can't flute with a hammer stone. Nice little simple one, right? This is what I'm saying. The idea that you have to always be transitioning into copper or you can't get super small, thin little flakes with a hammer stone is absolutely ridiculous. You know, early versions of us were using simply just hammer stones to drive super thin flakes off to make all sorts of hand tools and cutting tools. And it can be done today with a variety of hammer stones. More importantly, a flat stone like this. Let's do another one. <laughs> another thinning flake, just right along that one side. You can see there's my first one, there's my second one. Just making my base a little bit easier to pressure flake. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more shape. I'm just gonna use the same hammer stone. I've kind of got, when you look at this guy, a little bit more mass over here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this off through some strikes to make it just a little bit smaller and then get ready to pressure flake it up. But I'm just looking to give it a little bit more, just a little bit, a little bit more shape. It's easier to shape with a hammer stone than it is to do it with a flaker. I think we'll be good to go. There we go. After working this, just a hammer stone, we can go ahead and start pressure flaking this. Really my first pass on the pressure flaking is really just kind of evening everything out. If I gotta drive a lot of stone off of this still, you know, like there's a little piece right here, I'll come back, give it some abrasion, take my flat stone and just give it that little pop. And that was a little target piece I was going for. 
and it comes off nice and easy. The reason why, you know, you can't, uh, you know, continue to use your hammer stone, but after a while, it's going to get a little, a little dicey. You might be taking off more stone than you want. And that's really when I stop using the hammer stone is where I'm like, in my mind, I say, all right, I'm not looking to remove any more length, any more width from this guy. So I need to drop down to the next smallest, you know, tool size, and that would be a pressure flaker or even just a thin billet. But for just working stone, hammer stone only with a flaker, you can get where you need to go. Nice. That will definitely haft, that will fly. Despite having, you know, pressure flake this little style of atlatl dart point, the most important thing is understanding how much thinning you can actually do with a hammer stone. I think a good rule of thumb is people should really practice and to really understand and fully develop their napping skills. They should be using hard hammer percussion, whether it's strikes or slaps and grinds and abrasion. You should be using that about, I don't know, I say about 80% of the time. 80% of the time is a good rule of thumb. Reserve about 15% for your soft billets. And that last 5% for pressure flaking with some sort of antler tying. Avoid jumping to the copper. I'm not saying copper isn't something that is used today, but it's also something that kind of takes away a deeper understanding on how to nap, how to produce flakes, how to take a simple chunk of stone and just using a hammer stone, reduce it all the way down to a nice biface or reduce it down to some sort of preform, pressure flake it, and then get that tool into action. So in conclusion, keep in mind, you can do a lot of fitting with your hammer stones. Don't overlook them. Get varieties of shapes and sizes, the flats, the rounds, the egg shapes, the softballs. Understand how to use them, when to use them, and know that you can definitely thin a piece of material down into that working form. And before you know it, you'll be doing most of your thinning with hammer stones. Okay, that's all I got. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, see you in the bush.